Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at histograms so we can answer questions from exercise 3D. Now hopefully you've seen these at GCSE, they're used to represent grouped continuous data and the important factor in a histogram, it's like a bar chart but not quite a bar chart in that the area of each bar is proportional to the frequency of each group. Okay, so we're looking at the area of the bar that has some relation to the frequency of the group. It's some multiple of the frequency of the group. So it's area equals some constant of proportion times frequency. At GCSE you were given that k equals 1 and this is a very, very sensible way of doing things. However, the exam board have decided to make things more difficult for us and we increased a, in, included a proportion in there where probably they don't really need to. Anyway, rant over. Let's have a go at this topic then. So when drawing a histogram, you can calculate the frequency by using the formula frequency density, which is what we're going to use on our y-axis, equals frequency divided by class width. Okay, so this is going to be how it's different from a normal box, um, a, a normal bar chart, in that bar charts would usually have frequency along the y-axis. Frequency density, in this case for a histogram, is going to be on the y-axis instead. All right then, so let's have a look at a question then. So a random sample of 200 students were asked how long it took them to complete their homework the previous night. The time was recorded and summarised in the table to the right. So there were 55 people who took between 25 and 30 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Draw a histogram to represent um, and a frequency polygon for this data. Okay, interesting. Um, part B is estimate how many students took between 36 and 45 minutes to complete their homework. Right, okay. So what we need first is a little bit of frequency density going on. So what we're going to do is frequency divided by the class width. So 11. Now effectively what this 11 is representing is the height of the bar. If you're not happy with frequency density, it is a word you'll have to remember, but think height of the bar. So the height of this bar is going to be 11. So therefore 11 times the base on this bar is going to be 5, which will give us an area of 55. So that's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to do 39 divided by 5 as a width of 5, 68 divided by 5, 32 divided by 10, and 6 divided by 30. Okay. So what we'll get here is um, frequency density up to potentially 11. And then for the first bar, we're going to have a bar in between 25 to 30 with a height of 11. So there should be no gaps in your bar because there are no gaps in this grouped data here. The next bar is going to be in between 30 to 35 with a height of 7.8. 35 to 40 of 13.6 height. And 40 to 50, we're going to have a height of 3.2. And from 50 to 80, we're going to have a height of 0.2. Okay, now if you were to work out the areas of each of these bars in this case here, we're going to see that the area is exactly what we have here on the frequency column. So in this case here, the first bar has an area of 55, etc, etc. Okay, so now what they're looking for us to do is to split up the areas of these bars and look at how many people revive... Um, did their homework in between 36 to 45 minutes. Now what we know here is that there are 68 people that did their homework in between 35 to 40 minutes. Oh, we've still got to plot the uh, frequency polygon. Now what that is, is just a line that connects the middle of the tops of each of these bars to each other. So we have a marker here, a marker here, marker down here on the middle of the top of that bar there. Okay, so that's what we're going to need there for a frequency polygon. Okay, going back to this slightly more interesting question here. 
what we have is calculate the areas of the students in between 36 to 45. So what we know is we're probably going to need 4 out of 5 on this bar here. So effectively 80% of this bar here that goes from 36 up to 40. So 4 times 13.6 with a base of 4 and a height of 13.6, which is uh, some value. And then we're going to add that on to base of 5 times height of 3.2 and we'll get 70.4 students so round that to the nearest whole student so it's probably approximately 70 students okay so another histogram question here so a random sample of daily mean temperatures was taken from a large data set for Hearn in 2015 the temperatures were summarized in grouped frequency and represented by a histogram Give a reason to support the use of a histogram to represent this data and write down the underlying feature associated with each of the bars in a histogram. Okay, so give a reason to support the use of a histogram. Since temperatures are continuous and the data is already in groups, a histogram here is appropriate, especially if the groups are not of the same width. Okay, if they have a different width on each of the frequency um, bands, then that's a good use of a histogram. For example, here where they have different widths on the grouped intervals here, a um, frequency diagram is probably not going to be best. Histogram is going to be better here. Okay, so write down the underlying feature of a histogram. The area of each bar is proportional to the frequency. OK, continuing on the same question here, on the histogram, the rectangle represented from 16 to 18 class was 3.2 high and 2 centimetres wide. The frequency of this class was 8. Show that each day is represented by an area of 0.8. So what we have here, if we look at the bar here, is a height of 3.2, a base of 2 centimetres, and this gives us an area of 4.6 centimetres squared. Now we know that this corresponds to a frequency of 8. So we know that 8 times some value gives um, 0.64. So divide through by 8, and what you'll get is the value for one day, which is equal to 0.8 centimetres squared. Give the total area of the histogram was 48 centimetres squared give the total number of days in the sample. So what we'll do here is if one day equals uh, 0.8 centimetres squared, um, how many would 48 centimetres squared be? Well, what we need to do is multiply by 60 here because 48 divided by 0.8 is 60. So we'll get 60 days here. OK, right, so your turn to have a go at this question here now. Feel free to zoom in on the video um, and, uh, yeah, pause the video and have a go at this question. All right, then, well done for having a go at this question here then. So some students took part in an obstacle course race. Uh, the time it took each student to complete the race was noted. The results are shown in the histogram diagram here. Uh, give a reason to justify the use of a histogram to represent this data. Okay, what we have here is continuous grouped data with intervals of different widths. So if all the intervals were the same width, you might as well just use a frequency diagram. The key feature of a histogram is that it takes into account how wide your interval was and then works out that as a proportion of the number of students who finished in that interval. The number of students who took uh, between 60 and 70 is 90, in seconds is 90. So between 60 to 70 here, we have 90 students, but we only have an area of 60, whoops, 60 centimetres squared. Um, 
find the number of students it took between 40 and 60. Okay, so what we need here is a little bit of a calculation in that one, so 60 centimeters squared is representing 90 students here. So each centimeter square is representing 1.5 students. Or effectively, we could say that two thirds centimeters squared is representing one student. Now, we'll have a look at the question here to see which which relation would probably be easier to use. Find the number of students it took between 40 and 60 centimeters, 60 seconds. So we have a base of 20, a height of five. So that's 100 centimeters squared. So for each centimeter squared, we have 1.5 students. So this is going to be 150 students. Find the number of students it took between 80 seconds or less. So what we've got here is um, 100 students here, 90 students here. We need the amount of students for 80 or less. So that's going to be um, 8.3 times by 10. So that would be 83 centimeters squared. Now, 83 centimeters squared to 83 times 1.5. Uh, why are we doing this? Because we're working out the number of students in between 70 to 80 here, and that was approximately 124.5 students. We'll use 125 students here. But what we want is 80 seconds or less. So the total answer for this question here is going to be 125 plus the 90 students in between 60 to 70, plus the 150 students that were in between 40 to 60. And what we would get is 365 students approximately from 80 or less. Calculate the total number of students who took part in the race. Right, well, let's carry on working out these intervals here. This one is 14 times by 5, so that's an area of 70. So 70 times 1.5 is going to be 105 students. The next one here is going to be 12 times 5, so that's an area of 60. So 60 times 1.5 is going to be 90 students. And from 90 to 120, we have approximately a height of 3. So that's going to be three, 30 times 3 is 90 centimetres squared. So 90 times 1.5 is 135 students. So adding all these students up together, we've got 365 already. And then we'll add this on to 135, add on another 90, add on another 105, and we get about 695 students. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here then. So definitely have lots of practice on exercise 3D then. The reason we need to have lots of practice on this is that the questions are slightly different from GCSE. There's a little proportion part of this question that uh, isn't really needed but is in the exam. So we do need to be good at it. Right, thanks very much for watching this video then.